So we're going to try some practice exercises uh, using truth tables. And the first exercise is just to determine whether a proposition is true using a particular row on the truth table. And you know, you're given four options, yes, no. <laughs> um, but you have to be able to spot the right reason for whether the proposition is true or false. So uh, following our rules, right, we got rule five. We've got two variables in our formula, P uh, or Q. So following rule five, that's four rows. With our following rule six, we've got our distribution, every possible combination of uh, truth assignments for the atomic propositions. And, and we have a formula in here, okay? And then following rule seven, we copy and paste the uh, truth assignments for P and the truth assignments for Q. Again, I want to emphasize how easy it is to do this. If you already have a table loaded in a spreadsheet and you simply, you know, you copy and paste a bunch of these tables <laughs> as kind of a template, you just copy and paste a bunch of these tables and just use them uh, for, uh, you know, for your work here. Uh, it'll just make your life so much easier. Uh, so we got our, our truth assignments. Now we just look towards row two. All right, look at row two, and we've got uh, T is true and Q is uh, false. But since it's at least one disjunct is true, uh, this proposition is true following rule eight. We enclose it in parentheses, and we look for our options. Right, we got two options for yes. <laughs> at least one of the disjuncts is true. That's one option there at the top, and the third one is the consequence is false. Well, you know, okay, so Q might be listed second, but this isn't a conditional, so this isn't... Uh, so the Q isn't a consequent there, right? You got to be careful. I'm I'm uh, going to list a variety of different reasons that look plausible and some even look true or in some sense of the word, uh, but only one is actually the answer to the question, right? And what only one's an answer to the question. So you, you know, for instance, there that second one look it says at least one disjunct is false. Well, that's true. At least one disjunct is false, but that doesn't make the complex proposition false. Remember, for a disjunction, for the truth conditions for a disjunction, just at least one has to be true. So be careful. I'm, I'm going to be a little sneaky there with uh, some of the reasoning. Okay, so we looked at one. Let's try another one. And we're just going to go ahead and zip right to our row. We got our uh, formula, not P and not Q. So following rule five, we've got our four rows. Following rule six, we have our distribution of uh, truth conditions. Following row seven, we simply copy and paste the uh, truth assignments under P and then under Q. All right, so we uh, have the exact same ones. All right, so now we keep in mind, right, overall, even those two negations in here, overall, this is a conjunction. Now, I recommend doing the negate, well, yeah, not recommend, right, you should <laughs> uh, follow, uh, give the truth assignments for the negations first. So uh, if P is true, then the negation of P is false. So we lose that, and then if P is false, the negation of P is true, right? So it kind of gives the opposite truth value. Same thing for Q, all right? So we just list those, same thing for Q. And then we look at row four to determine whether this proposition is true. And sure enough, both of these conjuncts is true, right? Both of these conjuncts are, are true. So yes, the, the uh, conjunction is true. Now we look over at our options. We got three yeses and one no. Uh, all atomic propositions are true, both conjuncts are true, the consequent is true. Well, that consequent, that's kind of an easy one to you know, leave aside because, again, we don't have a consequent here since this is a conditional, not a, uh, uh, excuse me, since this is a conjunction, not a conditional. So we can leave that off. And look at the top of it, all atomic propositions are true. Well, that's actually false, right, because they're both false. But even if it were, right, even if it were true that all time propositions, that's not what makes a conjunction true. What makes a conjunction true is that both conjuncts are true. And that's the second uh, option there. Both conjuncts are true, right? Okay, now let's take another look at another one. Now we got three variables, P, Q, and R. So following our rule five, we have our, uh, 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 we've got eight rows following rule five. And again, just to kind of spell out the uh, application of rule six, right? The first four rows of P are true. The second four, or the last four, are false. Then we just look at T, uh, Q, and we're just dealing with that first half there. We got uh, uh, half of those are true, and half of those are false. So copy and paste that all the way down. And then uh, R just gets true, false, and we just copy and paste that all the way down. Right? Now we put our formula in. Okay, so it's a bit more complex this time with this formula. We've got a parentheses, right? We've got a parenthesis, so keep that in mind. So the next step, following rule seven, we give uh, we we copy and paste our truth assignments for the atomic propositions, right? And then we take a look at the complex formula. Now, 
you know, you might be tempted just to go ahead and shoot right on over to R because it's simple. And in this case, it'd be harmless if you did that. But I recommend just get yourself in the habit of always taking care of the innermost parentheses first. All right, so we only got one set of parentheses here. But if we had two, right, take care of the innermost parentheses first, okay? So for uh, P, this is just kind of a simple matter of, you know, giving the opposite truth value there. Uh, 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 for, you know, if P is true, then it gets false. Then the negation of P is false. Uh, same thing for Q. All right, we get the opposite truth value, and now we find the truth value for the complex proposition. Okay, so here's just a quick little shortcut, right? Um, just deal with one. You know, don't don't bother checking both at the same time because you drive yourself nuts. All right. <laughs> so the truth condition for a condition for a, a disjunction, remember, is that at least one disjunct is true. So just you know, go on over, look on the Q side because you know there's a bunch, of, or you can look on the P side. You can start whichever one, but you you know. We've got our, our truths just hanging right over there, that, that true disjunction just hanging out right there. And so it's just easy just to slap those T's in. And then you do the same thing over for P, and you notice there's some overlap, but quickly kind of get those uh, trues in real fast. And now we have our false disjuncts here. And so we find out that there are you know two rows with a false disjunct, and that, that's kind of easy breezy, uh, simple to do. Now we take care of our truth assignments for the negations, right? And so here's a little trick. So what I did is, uh, since it's a negation for one that just completely alternates like that, I copied the first two rows there uh, and just moved it out and pasted it and, and just paste again and again. And it, and it has that nice alternating pattern really fast. <laughs> it, it, it just kind of works out. And then you, you, know, you, you manually fill in the other two rows. Okay. Uh, now we look on our row two and we see that at least one disjunct is... is uh, for overall for this disjunction, right? Because overall this is, is a disjunction. At least one disjunct, the negation of R, that is true. Even though the disjunct on the left-hand side of the disjunction of the negations of P and Q, but that's a mouthful, even though that's false, at least one disjunct is true for our disjunction here. And so that, that, gets, uh, that gets our, our truth assignment for T. And so we look, we know that it's true. Right, so we look for our yes, this is a yes, both conjuncts are true, and yes, at least one disjunct is true. Well, that both conjuncts, you know, don't, don't get tripped up there. Conjuncts are for conjunctions, but this is a disjunction. This is a disjunction. So, um, you know, it's at least one disjunct is true. That's our conditions for uh, the, the, whether a disjunction is true. And you know, look at that no. That no is, you know, I have that no there. At least one disjunct is false. And it's true that at least one disjunct is false, but I'm trying to mess with you, right? It doesn't matter if a disjunct is false. At, you know, at least one disjunct is false. Um, a disjunction is false only if both disjuncts are false. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, that's not the case here. We have, we have at least one disjunct is true. Uh, similar comments apply with, you know, no, the antecedent is false. Uh, um, it's, you know, the first proposition, uh, 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 you know, the first complex proposition there. True, it's first, and true, it's false, but it's not an antecedent. <laughs> Antecedents are for conditionals, not disjunctions. So be careful when you're looking uh, for these options. Now, uh, there might be a little late to mention this, uh, but there is a shortcut way to do this, right? Now, I, I took it through the long way because I wanted to take you step by step for, you know, for filling out truth tables. And I think it's, especially at this beginning, I think it's a really good idea just to take a step by step. And by the way, don't delete any of your truth tables, just keep them, right? Just keep, you did all that work, don't throw them away. <laughs> just keep them. Um, but there is actually a shortcut to this, right? We know our truth assignments for our common propositions because it's given to us by the row, right? So you can't just simply put that one row in there for these uh, options. And, you know, I've given you, you know, you've seen them in the text, we've gone over them several times. You know the truth assignments just for that row. So following rule seven, we put our um, uh, we put our truth assignments for the uh, atomic propositions in the formula. Then we apply the truth conditions for negation within the parentheses. Then we determine the truth the, you know the truth value of that complex proposition on you know that one side of the you know the, the disjunction that's the left handed disjunct right <laughs> the disjunction within the disjunction. Uh, now we give the figure out the truth value of the uh, negation on the right hand side and now we figure out the overall truth value for the proposition and we look and find our option just like before right just like before so that is a shortcut i don't recommend doing it at the beginning because you're going to need the practice of filling out truth tables uh but there might come a time when you when you want to use shortcuts and right? there might, might be an advantage to it so here's uh here's another kind of question uh, so i sorry i cut off the instructions there but uh, what you're supposed to do is, is 
to determine which rows uh, are false for this uh, proposition. So you're going to need to construct the entire truth table this way. All right. Um, notice there's that option none. It's possible that none of these uh, for for the truth of sentence that none of the none of the rows are false. It's possible. Uh, but you, you know you need to check and make sure. So following rule five, we got our P and Q that gives us uh, four rows. We following rule six, we have our truth assignments. We put our formula into the uh, truth table. Following row, uh, rule seven, we uh, put our truth assignment. You know, you know, just copy and paste the truth assignments for the atomic propositions in there. Okay. Now once again, use uh, you know solve the uh, you know find the excuse me find the truth value for the complex proposition in the in the innermost parentheses first do you know work from the innermost outwards okay innermost outwards uh so we've got uh, a conditional here and remember the only way a conditional is false is when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false so for this one that's only row two and the rest of the rows are true for this uh, conditional within the parentheses. Okay? So we've got true, false, true, true. Right? Okay. Now we move to the outermost parentheses. Right? And again, a we have it's a conditional. Right? It, not the outermost parentheses, outside the parentheses, because overall this is a conditional. So we know that a conditional is false only if the antecedents are true and the consequent is false. So you don't even need to look at rows three and four. Right? We can just skip those. Uh, just look at rows one and two. So those are because those are both uh, ante where those are both rows where the antecedent is true. Okay? Uh, so looking at row one, we got a true antecedent and a true consequent. Well, it's not row one, right? Because we're looking for the false ones. So, but row two, right? We have a true antecedent and a true consequent, right? So row two is false, right? And we mark that one and only that one. Uh, uh, for our problem here. Now keep in mind with some of these, it might be more than one, right? And it's set to take, you know, you, you can mark all of them if you want to, but you're going to get the problem wrong. Right? <laughs> and if you're marking none and one of the number, then something went wrong. Right? You, 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 missed, you made a mistake there. Um, it can be uh, more than one of these rows and the computer is set to accept uh, more than one response for all of them, for all of them. So don't think that, you know, you just click and see, if, you know, do computer tricks that way. It's not going to work. Um, but yeah, in some cases it's only, it's going to be none. In some cases it's only going to be one row. In some cases it's going to be multiple rows. So just be alert, uh, alert with that. Okay. So, um, uh, well, let's try another one. All right. So we've got our formula here and again, sorry, it's cut off. The instructions are cut off, but, uh, it's going to be a long truth table. It's the same sort of instructions, except now we have three variables, right? So we got rows one through eight and possibly none. Uh, so following rule five, we get our, uh, we have eight rows, right? Cause we've got three variables, two raised to the power of three, that's eight rows. And we put in our truth assignments for T, uh, sorry, for P, uh, Q, and and R, hopefully this should be real familiar by now. If you're still lost with this, you better go back and review that part in the video. Now we put our formula into our uh, truth table, and now following rule seven, we copy and paste those truth assignments for P, Q, and R into the truth table, just like so. All right. Now we've got two sets of parentheses here. Work from the innermost parentheses outward. All right, innermost parentheses outward. And over, by the way, overall, this is a negation, right? Overall, this is a negation. Okay, so innermost parentheses. And, and again, you know, just do yourself a favor, right? You, you know, you got alternating T's and F's here. You're going to drive yourself nuts if you try to look at both to determine. Just stick with Q first, right? Because we, we know the truth conditions for a disjunction. We know that at least that, that the disjunction is true if at least one disjunct is true. So just go in there and, you know, look for the T's. Right? They're grouped. Rows one and two, rows five and six. Just hit T for the disjunction there. And then for R, right, you just you just look over and you find the, the T's there and the rest are going to be false. Okay, so it, it's a pretty simple little setup. Right? Pretty simple little setup. All right. Now we have uh, the, con the, the uh, conjunction. So the innermost parentheses is a disjunction. The, you know, the working outwards for that parentheses, that's a conjunction. Right? And one conjunct is P and the other conjunct is the disjunction Q or R. Okay. Now, conjunctions also can be, there's you know, kind of a fast way to do this too, especially with, you know, you know this leftmost uh, atomic proposition, because you notice five, six, seven, eight, P is assigned false. 
Well, a conjunction is false when at least one conjunct is false. Well, that makes that part fast, right? We got five, six, seven, eight. That's false real fast. <laughs> uh, now we just need to take, just look at the disjunction, all right? And we got one false there for the disjunction. We will put that in. Uh, and that means that the rest are true, all right? That means the rest are true because all the P's are true and the disjuncts are true uh, right there for rows one, two, and three. Okay. Now, overall, this complex proposition is a negation is a negation, and we're looking for the false rows. Right? So uh, for that, we need to look for those rows where the conjunction is true. Well, you know, that's just the first three. Right? That's just the first three. So uh, rows one, two, three are false, and we go on our problem, and we you know, go into the computer, and we mark one, two, and three as our false rows, right? Okay, so those are the kinds of problems that we got for this time around. Um, I suggest keeping up a uh, practice with your truth tables and you're getting real good at filling them out. It can be, it, you know, it's, it's not complicated. Following the rules are not complicated. You, you can have a long truth table real fast. You can have a really big truth table. But if you follow these rules just one at a time, you can tick off what you need to do. Just, you know, da -da 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 -da, just, you know get it done. Um, okay, if you have any questions, you know, make sure you send me an email. You can come by my office. More, have no problem with that. Um, you know, good luck on these practice examples and keep thinking.